Greetings, this is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. Today's topic is the new neck display as seen in version 2 of SimNeck. The neck display has been significantly enhanced, so I thought maybe a video might be useful. Let's bring up a design. So here I have a fresh design, and let's go load in uh, an example and we'll show you where this is so you can pull it up if you like to follow along. So we're going to load a circuit. It turns out it's in examples. You can see I've been here before. Neck to work. The Yagi 5 element. And let's bring up the neck display. So on the right hand side here, you'll see two child frames. One is called the neck display and the other one is the spreadsheet. We aren't going to use the spreadsheet today, so I'm going to close it. And here is our neck display. In the neck display, I'll make it even bigger. I'm going to use my mouse wheel to make this a little bigger. On the right hand side of the neck display are various reports. So for example, the max gain location is represented by a black circle and it's shown right here. This gives information about that point on the field. There's the 3D beam width. That's the width of this beam essentially. Then there's a marker which we can move around called the X location. And the X location can have a variety of modes. Right now it's in free mode, so I can right click anywhere I want. Oh, turn off track X. There we go. Now I completely messed this up, so I'm going to do a find and a reset. Move this back a little bit. So over here on the X location, now it's in free mode. I can click where I right click where I want it to go. Let, in particular, let's do this because that's the maximum gain in the opposite direction. And here we see down in the bottom a report, which is the subtraction of the gain in this direction and the gain wherever the X is. And it's saying that my uh, front to this back lobe is 20 dB. The first and probably most important key I have already used, but I'm going to do it anyway. Suppose I've completely messed up this display and I and maybe even moved it entirely off the screen and I can't easily figure out how to rotate it and get it back. The first key that I might want to use is called the find key. Now find won't change my perspective but it will bring all the elements back onto the display. So all the elements are back on the display but I haven't changed my perspective. To reset the perspective, I can use the reset key. And this sets it to a default perspective. It does a find and then it sets it so that we're always looking at it in this view. And that view is minus 10, 20. And that's kind of picked at random. Um, but it's a, a general good starting point. The viewing angle is displayed in the lower left hand corner here and I can change my viewing angle. In this case I'm using the mouse wheel. That's moving around the azimuth and I can move in elevation as well. I can also use these sliders. And to do a free form, I can hold down the control key and move it around with the mouse. Again, I did a reset 
and brought it back into view. Four additional buttons are provided. Over here on the left-hand side, they are snaps. Here we do a snap to X, which means I'm looking along the X axis with Y on the right. Snap Y, I'm looking along the Y axis with X on the right. I can snap to Z, and I can snap to the gain. Now, snapping to the gain doesn't make much difference between snap Y and snap gain. That's because the maximum gain is along the x-axis. If the maximum gain were at 45 degrees or some other angle, snap G would cause the viewpoint to look at that gain broadside so you can get an elevation plot. Let's do another reset. Now you may have noticed that on various orientations a gain grid came up. So for example, if I snap Z, here is my gain grid. Over here on the right hand side on the X, as I said, there are multiple modes. One is the free that I've been using. One is called backward and it's trying to find the maximum gain in the opposite direction at and at the same elevation. If the elevation, if the maximum gain in the backward direction were not at the same elevation, it, the forward to backward gain might be considered incorrect. Another thing you can do on the X location is to have it find the maximum side lobe which is the maximum gain of the pattern not on this lobe. So in this case, the maximum gain not on the main lobe is up here. I can, of course, just have it track the max. And I can set it to be free. Moving to the left-hand side, a set of drawing elements are listed. The azimuth and the altitude can be viewed independently of the field itself. They are both always drawn through the X location. So let's turn off the field, turn on the azimuth, and let's do a free here. Over here, I'm going to set the X to be free. And in this case, wherever I click the X, the azimuth will go through there. If, if I change it, the X to be not on that, you'll notice that now the azimuth plot is following where I click the X. The elevation, of course, can be viewed independently. And again, it's drawn through the X location. If you want to draw it through the max, you can just set this back to max. In order to view the elevation pattern, probably the easiest thing to say snap G. And there is the max gain pattern, elevation gain pattern. And to view the azimuth gain pattern, it's usually easiest to snap to Z. And here we have the azimuth gain pattern. The next option down is what we generally use to view the field in 3D. It's called shapes for historic reasons. And it is drawn color encoded where red is the maximum gain and the violet down here is a minimum gain. To see the gain at any given point, just move your mouse over it. You'll see a report up here. And of course, if this is set in free mode, I can just click on it and get the report over here. After shapes, we have a th the 3D wireframe model. This is what we used to see in a lot of uh, older tools. It's a little confusing because there's it's transparent. So when you zoom in on this, you don't really know whether this wire is on this side or that side. And when you look in here, it's very difficult to know even which lobe it's on. 
So I don't use that very much. It can be useful in that it shows you the resolution of the gain pattern. But if you look closely at shapes, you can also see the change in the resolution of the gain pattern. Turning both of those off, I can come down and do the wires. I'm going to do a find. Here are my wires. And if wires are being displayed, you can also see the currents and you can see the uh, next sources or the taps on the wires. Currents can be turned on and off. The scale of any one of these can be changed by moving the mouse over the element and using the wheel. I'm going to turn them off. Wires can be displayed in several different ways. What you see here is a dot at the end of every segment. Um, the mode is changed with this. Here we see just the wire ends. This mode is called junction, and there are no junctions for wires here, but if there was a wire from here to here, for example, there would be a dot at that junction. Again, all the segments, just the ends of wires and the junctions. To see a report about a given wire, you can just hover over it, and you'll see it up here. It's used mostly for information purposes, Sometimes it's nice to know how many segments are on the wire, um, but you clearly know the endpoints because you entered them. Again, if you go with currents and you hover over one of these, you'll get a report at the top, which is what the current is on the appropriate segment down here. And if you come down and hover over the next source, you will see a report at the top of the field which specifies where the wire was tapped, what its impedance is looking into it, how much power is going into it, what the current is at that point. Finally, we come to the lower left-hand side of the corner down here at the viewpoint. The viewpoint has a variety of modes. Let's turn this back on, turn currents off go to our traditional display. And the viewpoint can be either free, where I can move around with the mouse wheel or with my arrows. I can track gain. And when I'm tracking the gain and I set the elevation to be zero, I'll get my grid coming up. I can track where the X is so that the viewpoint is always looking broadside onto the X. If I move the X over here, you'll see it moves the display so that the elevation pattern is going through it. A few general notes before wrapping up. As the mouse moves around the display, the reports are generated at the top, as we've seen. This is good for wires, currents, next sources, and of the field itself, of course. Additionally, at the top here, you'll see two pull-down menus. Those menus are used to either capture images to files or images to your clipboard. Note that the default capture mode may in fact generate a floating file. So let's do a whole frame. And you'll see here's a file element that got created. You can drag that onto your other documents or onto your desktop. Well, that pretty much covers the neck display. There's a lot of information available on the display and there are many options for displaying that information. SimNeck is somewhat unique in that it does not provide independent windows for each of the various views. Instead, it is chosen to allow element control so that the user can overlay whatever set of drawings seems most fit for the questions at hand. Again, this is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. Thanks for watching, and thanks for using SimNet.